Oof. Yeah. Oh man, see how raw and red that nose is? The plan for today is a little bit different than maybe I had expected, but I still think we can do something fun. I thought I would take you through the edit of a photo from a little while ago. This was last February when I was in Mexico. I was shooting for a mezcal brand down there. Basically, they wanted me to come down, take a bunch of photos, kind of document a bit of the life there. This photo in particular, I think is a fun one because it definitely shows the kind of vibe of, of who Gabriel is. You know, he's confident, he's got a bit of swagger, but he's super kind. I think you can see that in the photo. First things first with this photo is we have to decide on our crop. Um, this is obviously way, way, way too much headroom. Um, however, I do like the idea of being able to sort of see him moving towards this area. So like, for example, if we had him dead center, I mean, this is dead center right about here. I mean, that's, that's nice, but I don't think it kind of tells a story. We're gonna bring this down a little bit and we just push it so that we are seeing him kind of walk in this direction it kind of makes us feel like we're, we're we're walking with him through this area right away i know i want to bring up my shadows uh, i can see that it's just too dark overall here i don't mind having kind of darker blacks but i usually will bring my shadow up a little bit and then i will allow my black to kind of stay where it is or maybe even deepen a little bit but the idea there is just to get a little more texture in there so that we have a little bit more I don't know, drawing us to him, because if he's all dark like that, yeah, it's a big black mass there that we can see that kind of pulls us towards it, but um, I like getting a little bit of texture in there. From there, um, we can decide if we need to do any base exposure corrections. So if we bump this up a little bit and see how that looks, I don't really think we need to. I think it was well exposed where it was at. Where are we at here? We're at f2.5, 1 one hundredth of a second, ISO 200. I can guarantee I shot this on aperture priority because we were just moving around a bunch and that was the best option. So knowing that right away, I'm gonna look at my whites here and I'm gonna probably bring those up a little bit. Um, and then we're pretty much good there. From there, I would jump into my tone curve. Right away, I know that I'm gonna bring my blacks up a bit. Not like, not a crazy amount. I'm not gonna like do that super washed out look, but I'm just gonna bring them up a tiny bit. And I'm gonna bring the whites down a bit. From there, we might try and just do a slightly um, softer kind of reverse S curve. Now, this is gonna seem dumb, but what I like to do is to do that kind of opposite S curve and then just bump up my contrast a little bit. Um, let's bring that back. Yeah, I think right about right about there. Um, I find that that gives me a nice balance of what I'm kind of looking for. I'm not going to touch these other ones until I kind of decide stylistically what I want the colors to look like. White balance. Let's see how this looks in a couple other vibes. So daylight. I feel like that's too warm. Cloudy is going to be way too warm. Fluorescent or anything like that is not going to be quite right. So let's go as shot and then we're just going to bring this up a tiny bit. I am going to warm it up, but only a tiny bit, about 100 Kelvin or so. Where were we at? 45, 50. So we're going to go to like, um, yeah, 46, 75, about 100, nothing crazy. Okay, so vibrance, this is something that we need to be aware of. So when you're changing vibrance, um, a lot of people like to talk about how it doesn't really affect skin tones. That's not true in general. But it's especially not true when you're dealing with somebody who uh, has more melanin. So anybody who is darker skinned, you're gonna notice if I bump up my uh, vibrance, look what it's doing to him. And uh, that's obviously an insane amount. You can get away with doing a little bit and being fine. Uh, so we are actually gonna up the vibrance a tiny bit, but not very much. We're gonna do most of that in our colors. I am actually going to use um, the spot tool here that allows us to pinpoint what we wanna do. We'll hold on here and then we can uh, we can kind of see what we wanna do. Do we wanna go more red? Do we wanna go more yellow? I think if anything, we want to maybe push just a touch more yellow and then we'll, we'll saturate a little more, but we're actually gonna bring up the luminance a little bit. Okay, we know that our skin tones are more or less where we want them. Next, we're gonna look at some of the stuff that's important. This guy here, we really wanna make sure that we are emphasizing that because this guy owns a mezcal brand. He's wearing a super cool mezcal shirt. Okay, so from there, I would probably start doing some masking stuff here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to go to a luminance range. I'm going to select there. I'm gonna refine it a little bit, right about there, and apply. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually subtract from that mask. I don't want it to be messing with the subject at all. I really just want that on the background. And the reason we're doing this mask is because I would like to go to our clarity 
and just soften that up a little bit and same with our texture and that's just gonna soften everything behind him a little bit more that's in that kind of higher luminance range. I think what we probably want to do is actually add a bit of an additional vignette um, but we're gonna make the midpoint super super high. Uh, what I like to do is actually turn off the feather entirely and uh, make the vignette a little bit more obvious and make it so that I can really see where we're at before I soften things out a little bit. So now I'll kind of maximize that. And you can see for sure, like we've lost a little bit of that depth uh, that we were trying to get by bringing the shadows up there in the bottom. And so we are going to just create one more quick little mask of the subject. And we are going to go into our shadows. Okay, so all these blues back here, that could be like some chromatic aberration stuff going on, you know, um, and that's annoying, but I'm not really too worried about it because I actually think having those kind of cool blues there is kind of interesting. What we could do to kind of lighten that a little bit would be to just go into our color mix and let's just see if we can bring that down a little bit. Yeah, we can, we can soften that a little bit. We can push a little more on the blue side rather than that kind of greeny side and that's gonna chill things out a little bit. But we don't get rid of it entirely because I actually think it's adding some kind of interesting colors in the background. Uh, the last thing that we're gonna do here is go into our color. We're gonna mess around with the color grade a little bit. Shadows always have some kind of color going on, right? Um, we don't want to make them completely devoid of, of any kind of color. So we're going to see what's going on here. To me, they're looking a little blue, so I might just emphasize that a little bit. Um, especially on him, they're looking quite blue, right? So. Let's go to right around there, um, and then we are not going to go that dark with it. Um, we're going to just add a little, little bit there. Uh, and then we can mess around with our luminance values and that kind of thing. So do we want to bring it up a bunch? Do we want to bring it down? I think bringing it down a little bit, um, bringing down the mid-tones I think can be interesting because that, to me, actually, if you do that, if you, um, if you get the kind of right balance between that and the... Um, the shadows, you can actually create a really nice kind of filmic look uh, without it being too over the top. Global, saturation, hue, luminance, all that kind of stuff on the color grading side, I don't usually touch. Um, sometimes you can get a kind of cool vibe to it. So if we wanted to create something that was like kind of a warmy, greeny vibe to it, we might do a little bit of that. Overall, we don't want to like kind of mess with any of that too much. And finally, the last part of color grading that I think could be really valuable is going into this kind of blend and balance side of things. So blending is essentially like how much the, um, the lights, mids, and shadows all blend into each other. So if we make it really, really high, everything's gonna soften up and blend together really nicely. Or if we go really low, we're gonna block things out so we're getting that deeper blues in the shadows and that is not bleeding into the mid-tones and the highlights aren't bleeding in. We're actually gonna separate a little bit and then uh, we're gonna look at our balance. So do we wanna go more blue towards the shadow side or do we wanna go a little bit warmer and greener towards this side? We're actually gonna just stick a little bit more blue and that's it. A couple little things we might do. We could go in and adjust a, a few more things. What I'm gonna do is just create one last quick edit on our subject himself. I'm just gonna bring the overall exposure on him up like a tiny, tiny bit and I am going to bring the color, I'm going to shift away from that green a little bit and that yellow a little bit. Okay, and then one last thing I wanna do here to really just emphasize the character is to throw in a linear gradient from the side and we're just gonna darken things up just a little bit. Um, let's see here, yeah, right about there. So you see, we just kinda of like darken things down pulling the shadows down a little bit. It's really emphasizing that like, this is the guy, he's walking through this, we're getting those beautiful greens and everything, but we're, we're seeing the pop of the mezcal, we're seeing the pop of his face a little bit more, and that's really what we wanna see here. Okay, so hopefully I will recover quickly and I won't have this whole thing for much longer and then I can go outside and have some fun but for now we're gonna be stuck in here editing photos and uh, hopefully creating some more videos inside these four walls. Uh, it's not so much that I don't think I could do much out there anyways, right animals? Yeah, they're asleep. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you. Peace.